Hello 108 class, Mr. McHugh here with you. Welcome to Chapter 9. We're going to be dealing with quadratic equations, inequalities, and functions. Uh, we're on page 495, starting off uh, this big chapter for us concerning parabolas and quadratic equations. I'm going to focus on 9.1 on um, square root properties and completing the square concept here. And to get going here with a quadratic equation here, notice, uh, you know, if you're on page 496, you'll see the box, you'll see it's the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. Well, let's, let's break this down here a little bit more. This is called the standard form. Okay, now, a couple things. First thing is, look at the exponents. Two, one, and a constant. The A, the B, and the C are letters that represent constants. So these are going to be numbers in here when you see these. And this is a trinomial. Notice the order of the exponents like I was talking about. 2, 1, uh, x to the 0 could be fit in here if you wanted to. So you, we've got a trinomial set equal to 0. And that should be a little bit familiar to you because we've worked with these before. We didn't call them a quadratic equation. Now, uh, for me, I used to wonder why they call this quadratic and just to help me make some sanity to my mind. Notice how many terms we have. One, two, three, four. So for me, it's a, it's a four-term equation. Um, the big thing is it's called a second-degree equation. I, if I just said four-degree, it's a four-term. Four terms. Second degree is talking to the highest exponent. Okay, that, that is crucial to this equation and what's going to happen with it. We're going to learn what, what the graphs are when we look at these. And we have done, done some of these before. Um, now we're going to really explore it here. Okay, so x is your variable. A, B, C are your constants. It's set equal to zero. Over here on the side, when you're graphing equations, you've got, uh, excuse me, I'll come over here. You've got your x-axis, you've got your y-axis, and right when you're at the origin, what is y equal to here? You know, it's one, two, three going up, negative one, negative two. Right at the origin, y equals zero. Is everybody with me on there? Thus, you are on the x-axis. We are finding where this parabola crosses the x-axis, and that's why it's set equal to zero. Okay, these are called roots when we find these solutions. So I'm giving you a little heads up here. So this is really y on the right-hand side. We don't use it for now. We, we are assigning y equal to zero, and we're on our way. Okay, so let's get serious here. Let's do some review material. Um, what happens if this is objective number one? This is the zero factor property. Good news, we've covered this. And... I want you to start this problem by looking at x squared plus x minus 6 equal to 0 and you're asked to solve for it. Okay, now that you know, you see the exponent is a 2, the highest order, it's a second degree equation, you're going to have two solutions usually, maybe 1, maybe 0, but usually it's 2. That's the, that's the most you can have is 2. Okay, so what they want you to do is how could you solve and find the values of x? Every time you see a trinomial, what do we do with it? That's right, we factor. So I'll, I'll go through the paces of it real quick. x plus 3 times x minus 2. If you do reverse FOIL, you unlock the safe, you know the drill from way back chapter 5, you would get the original equation. So you've unlocked the safe, you've factored it. Now you've got two sets of parentheses multiplied together, produce a result of 0. What value of x inside the 0, excuse me, what side? Voila. What value of x inside these parentheses will produce the zero? Thus, you take both parentheses, set them equal to zero, solve for x. You can see x equals negative 3, add 2 to both sides, and x equals 2, and these are your solutions. Now, what that's doing here real quick without getting crazy on the graphing is on the x-axis at 1, 2, 3, at negative 3, and at 1, 2, there's a parabola. Now, it happens to be a positive. Uh, a term up here, so I, I know from graphing it comes, it starts up high, it comes down, and it goes through like this. So the roots or the solutions are negative three and two. Okay, thus the my math lab you would list them like this. Okay, no parentheses. Don't, don't get hung up on that. We're not talking ordered pairs here. Okay, so let's keep going here. Uh, objective number two: square root properties. What happens if you have the variable x squared equal to a number and you need to isolate the x? To undo square in class, we do what? Hopefully you're saying it with me. Take the square root on both sides. And when you do that, what drops down? Oh, is this becoming familiar? That's right, the radical. 
drops down, the base drops down, and the key thing here is remember there's two values that will equal this. Now here's the classic one, x squared equals 9 x has to equal what? Either a positive 3 or a negative 3. And we use this symbol plus or minus from old school days. Unfortunately, my math lab does not have that, so you will have to list uh, the ordered pair in the solution set for this example over here. You would come over and say negative 3 comma 3 with the brackets. No parentheses. Okay. So we're, we're cruising here. You kind of get the idea of it, is that a positive 3 or a negative 3 multiplied by itself will give you a positive 9. So therefore, you've got two solutions. Okay. And what we're doing here now is looking at example 1 here. They say x squared equals 5. Take the square root on both sides. x equals plus or minus the square root of 5. Again, my math lab, I'm, I'm gonna, I'll stop doing this after a while. But you have to list the solutions individually. It's a little bit of a pain, but hopefully someday Math Lab is going to have an upgrade for it. So, okay, doke. Um, first page, we're cruising along here, doing some fairly uh, uh, okay problems here. Hopefully not too bad. This problem, now they are all quadratic because you see the square term. Okay, make sure you can identify. Again, you're Kellen Moore. What kind of problem are you dealing with? This is a quadratic equation. You Can you isolate the x squared term? There's no other x term. And I say, can you isolate it? And the answer is yes. If I add 48 to both sides, I have 4x squared equals 48. Now, can I isolate the x squared? You bet. Divide both sides by 4. 4 divided by 4 is 1x one, one squared equals 48 divided by 4 is 12. So now you've got x squared equals 12. Okay, now take the square root on both sides because you've got to isolate the x. And why are we doing that? To undo squaring, do the square root. But you have to do it on both sides to maintain balance. What drops down? The radical, x. Okay, and of course you've got plus or minus the square root of 12. Now when you do that, you've got to remember a little bit of busy work over here. Square root of 12, can you broke it down into what? Perfect squares can be pulled out. Remember that class? There you go, and you put plus or minus. Okay, now you see those answers, you know you need to separate them. Okay, hey, Mr. McHugh here. We have finished page one on section 9.1. So give ourselves a check mark that's in the books, and when I come back, we'll work on page two. Okay, take care. Bye.